Thank you, Chair. Now recognizes the gentlelady from North Carolina, uh, Representative Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. I thank our witnesses for being here today. You know, it's getting a little tiresome to hear President Trump blamed over and over for the Afghan withdrawal. It was the Biden administration that pushed the disastrous and chaotic withdrawal, and it's the Biden administration that's responsible for its poor execution. We all have confidence in our military, but when they're given orders from their commander in chief, they follow those orders. Uh, Mr. Sopko, were the orders to withdraw in the manner that they withdrew given by the Biden administration? Congressman, as I, Congress lady, as I mentioned before, I, we did not look at the withdrawal, my agency. So I, I really, you could ask the, a sec, the State Department IG, I think okay. they looked at the withdrawal. Uh, Ms. Angerella, do you have a comment on that? Um, from USAID's perspective, no. No, Ms. Shaw? I'm sorry, do you mind restating the question? Were the orders to withdraw in the manner that they withdrew given by the Biden administration? So our work looks specifically at decisions and directions given by um, embassy leadership at the time. And so we did find that they were uh, taking primary lead, working with the Department of Defense to execute that non-combatant evacuation. But somebody had to give the order to the embassy, right? Presumably so. Presumably so. Okay. Mr. Storr. Yes, ma'am. Were the orders to withdraw from Afghanistan given by the Biden administration? So uh, thank you for the question. We reported out in the lead IG reporting on the facts of what happened with the operation. Um, in terms of doing any oversight related to that, as I've testified, um, when the evacuation took place, our office pivoted to working on very time sensitive issues related to the, um, uh, to the evacuation itself, to the refugees and that. So we haven't done any independent oversight that I could testify to. As I've also testified, we have gone back and gotten the full after action that was done by the department. And my folks and I are examining that and if there's work to be done, we'll do it. I think it's a pretty pitiful situation where we have four federal government employees who cannot answer a simple question was the order to withdraw given by the Biden administration? I'm really not sure that that's under any question. Co it Congresswoman, I, I, I will cut to the chase. Obviously, the yeah. Biden administration was in charge, so the order had to come from the Biden administration. I think what all the IGs are saying, particularly mine, I have no jurisdiction to look at that decision. But obviously, it was made well, by I the did, Biden I didn't ask you to look at the jurisdiction. Yeah. I asked a simple question. Yeah. Were the orders to withdraw given by the Biden administration? Somebody in the Biden administration gave those orders. Okay. Mr. I'll take a risk and say that, but I don't oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Goodness. no, to the extent that's the question, there's, there's no question. A federal government employee taking a risk. <laughs> oh, my goodness, this is a red-letter day. Ms. <laughs> Angerella, do you agree with that? I would agree with IG Sopko, yes. All right, let's take this. Ms. Shaw, will you agree with that? Yes, I will agree. And Mr. Storch. Yes, ma'am. All right, finally, we get an <laughs> answer out of this panel having to do with the withdrawal. Okay. I Probably my next question is going to be a waste, but um, so I'll, I'll go on. Um, let me ask... Um, let me ask this question, um, or let me make a comment. I think the hasty and chaotic withdrawal reeks of poor planning, failed execution, paid with the blood of American soldiers. But as inspectors general, all of you had offices at the U.S. Embassy in Afghanistan. So what was your experience like while planning and executing the evacuation of your offices. I'm happy to answer that. I think the statement you made about it being confusing, hectic, and whatever, I did have people there. It was. And I think the best example of this, if you can get a, access to it, is to, to get a hold of the descent cable. Because what we were told, we've, I've never seen it, but there was a descent cable done by 
career State Department employees who describe, we've been told, the problems and how chaotic and how horrible it was at that situation. Well, thank you for that information. Ms. Angerella. Yeah, I would say our uh, direct hire American Foreign Service officer staff uh, were withdrawn earlier, but USAID IG had locally employed uh, staff, uh, six of whom were trying day in and day out to get to and through the Abbey Gate. And as a member of the senior leadership team at the time, we were engaging 24 hours a day on a text message exchange with all of that staff. Um, and as I testified, it will stay with me forever. Thank you. Ms. Shaw. So our two remaining uh, U.S. personnel left with the ordered departure in April 2021, so did not experience the circumstances of August, but our work did find that it was confusing and chaotic. Thank you. Mr. Storch. Uh, yes, ma'am. We had a number of offices at different times in Afghanistan uh, doing oversight. The number of people in country started to decline beginning in 2016 and then with COVID. So by the time of the actual uh, demise of the Afghan government and the like, we were primarily working from Qatar and other locations. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I apologize for going over. 